Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning meetups. We've been doing this now. Time just moves so fast. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's been two months, <laughs> two and a half, what, whatever. But um, it's just really, really great for us to join in in the mornings as entrepreneurs to talk about things that concern us being in business. You know, we've had talks on. Um, being an entrepreneur and raising a family and parenting. We've talked about self-image and, and goals and just a lots of um, health and lots of different things. And so um, we welcome anybody and everybody. We're not all just from one company or the same you know, pursuit, but what we have in common is that we are entrepreneurs, businessmen and women, mainly women here, but we do have a man coming on now. Delton's about to join us. And um, Dorcas is on, first time here for Dorcas. So welcome, good morning, Dorcas. And first time for my best friend since second grade, Kenya Conway, a lot of you guys know her. So um, let's go ahead and get started. You know, I'm always thinking, okay, Lord, what's a good topic of discussion for, um, for today? And something early about 5.30 in the morning uh, dropped into my spirit. For those of you who are new, okay, this isn't like boomy. I may come up with a topic, but I don't want this just to be me to do the talking. This is absolutely a discussion and we all have value and input and, and help one another. So um, this morning, what we're going to be talking about is what are we as entrepreneurs doing differently in this season to get different results? What are you going to be doing different in this season to get different results than you've gotten? You know, a couple of weeks ago, Delton shared, look, in the next 18 months, I'm making more money than I've made in my whole career. Well, he can't keep doing the same things that he's been doing if he wants to get those different results. So it has to be something, right, different that he's going to be doing. And all of us, same thing. All of us should have a um, something going on in our skill set and our mindset that helps us to take on like a new identity, do different things so we can have some different things to show up in our lives. So that's what we're gonna talk about this morning and, and share and inspire um, inspire one another. But I do, I do wanna do this. Kenya's in her car driving and I kind of know some of the things she's doing differently. And I want, I want her to share first cause this girl has just like stepped it up She's in my coaching class. I'm not going to say that just all the biopractice stuff has to do with what is going on with her, but talking about just turning something on, some superpowers, like we all need to step into our superpowers. She has done that and some amazing things have, are happening for her. So Kenya, just, you know, share with us um, about what you're doing differently and like the results that you're getting in your business. Okay. So as I'm driving along, person and tears are just welling up in my eyes and oftentimes these days I cry because it's the gratitude and the thankfulness and the like oh my gosh I'm doing it I'm doing it it's working it's unfolding things are working just like I heard they were supposed to if I just do the work and so I am constantly in awe but not because, well, yes, because I'm a big person. I'm supposed to be big. We're all supposed to be big. And um, all of my life I taught, I was taught that I should not, I should, you know, kind of contain myself because you don't want other people to feel awkward or certain things. It's just all these crazy programs dumb stuff that keep us in a box had kept me in a box until a couple of years ago I mean I had been wanting more for my life I knew that I could do more you know and so I just started seeking information and as I started to learn the principles that Bumi and you guys talk about on this call little by little I started applying them to my life and, you know, I started to see little, you know, results little by little. So long story short, two years ago in COVID, 
um, I said, I love helping people and I want to start a business and I'm not quite sure what it, what it is. And so I'd been hearing about, you know, mental health um, services and a, a program in particular called psychiatric rehabilitation. Y'all, I am an educator by trade. I don't, I'm not a therapist. I don't know anything about medicine, uh, uh, psychiatry, like absolutely nothing. But because it was what I wanted to do, it's funny, I met a person who I had not known, but for two months, we started talking, things started unfolding. He was like, you know what, I got um, a, a couple of mine who I want you to meet. At first, I was very hesitant about meeting them. And I'm so glad that I did because they are one of my strongest business partners, you know, to this day, we have a great relationship. So anyway, so things that I had to do was I had to learn myself. I had to learn the power that I really have, you know, things that I had to start doing differently. I had to start a morning routine. So, you know, I never was a sleep in person, you know, anyway, but, you know, I had to get up in the morning and I had to be intentional about my day. I had to do my meditation. I had to say my affirmations, which I do all during the day, turn off the TV, turn off the movies, you know, I had to really submerse myself in learning about me believe my belief level, increase in my confidence, um, and just really knowing what it means to take action. You know, at first I was a little afraid because I was like, I don't know anything about this, you know, getting licensed in the state of Maryland, you know, for a behavioral health practice is, hold on, let me stop myself. It is what you ever, what you say it is. When I started, people were telling me how difficult it was going to be. Oh, my gosh, it's going to take you forever. It's so hard. Da, 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 da. Girl and boy, I got that done in 90 days. Within 90 days, I got accredited and licensed by the state. And people were telling me it was going to take forever. And so if I listened to other people, I would have still been slow moving, you know, not making progress or anything like that. But I was like, you know what? I learned that, no. I control this thing. It is what I say it is. And that I live in that space all the time nowadays. Y'all should be in my head. When I'm, in, when I'm in conversation with people or I hear people talking and they're, you know, talking about how things can't happen or how this whole hum is this and, oh, it's going to be hard. I'm like in my head all day long. It might be like that for you, but it ain't going to be like that for me. You know, you got to get into it. And I had to get into a space knowing that it really is. We really do create this thing. Like I'm in the same practice that so many other people in Baltimore City are doing. You know, we have the same clientele, the same hospitals out there, you know, the same everything. But certain people are getting one set of results. Other people are getting another set of results. Why is that? It's because I'm choosing to create what I want. I said I wanted to be the number one behavioral health practice in Maryland and then in the United States, and I am on my way there. I'm so excited. I started with, um, so anyway, so I, I remember getting my very first check. It was $118, and I was so happy to get that check because it was like, okay, this thing works. If I could do it for $118 worth, I can increase and just, you know, keep increasing the income and, and helping more people. Um, and so I got that check on the wall. <laughs> and so that has, you know, grown to tens of thousand dollars a month, that particular business. You know, then we also um, do residential treatment for substance use disorder. And I started with a house with five beds and I just closed on a house less than two weeks ago for a home with 16 beds. And so, I'm doing that because like I'm getting in touch and I'm getting in alignment with who God says I am, who God says like these things are supposed to happen for me, you know, so I have to stay diligent and I have to stay intentional about setting my day up for success because I know that when I talk to people, they're going to love me. They're going to want to support my business. They're going to want to send people who need my services my way. You know, they, like I had, y'all, <laughs> I had to do a whole rewiring 
of my programming, a whole rewiring. And I still have a long way to go, but the results that I've seen in what I have done just this far has been astounding. And I'm so excited because if I can come this far, guess what? I can go, you know, even higher, you know? And then when I get there, I can go even higher than that. So uh, I don't know, Boomy, how much time I had, but I, I'm excited to share my story, you know, with anybody. If you want something different in your life, you got to do something different. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It is so, 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 so true. Um, so Boomy, I will... If you wanted to ask me some questions or if I didn't hit on something, you know, please let me know. I'm still driving along. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I did I wanted you to share your story first because I knew you may have to to go, but I want all of us to talk about and guys, don't be intimidated by Kenya's story. I'm not saying you got to get on it this morning and say all these things that happen for you. We're just talking about doing things differently. She's just showing us, man, when I decided to rewire my brain, when I decided to start setting up my day and create a routine, when I decided to um, be intentional and get more confidence and raise my belief level, then things fell in, in place. When I decided to walk in who God says that I, I am and believe that, then all these things fell in, into place. So there are has to be some things that in this season that we're deciding new for whatever businesses that we're in to get those different results. So I want you all to share this morning, either what are some decisions that you have made that you're doing differently or that you're determining, maybe you got inspired just now that you are going to do differently. So, um, you know, un unmuted, share. See, Felicia is unmuted. Did you want to share, Felicia? And oh, if yeah. anybody has a question for Kenya, she's here too until she has to um, go in to, to work. So look, she's doing this all on the side of her job. <laughs> so it's not like she was doing this full time. She has a full time job that she's doing this on the, on the side of. So it's really a, astounding your results. You know, I'm proud of you, King Bean. <laughs> oh, thank <Wow>. you. <laughs> Wow, Boomy, I, if it's okay, I'm going to jump in because, yes. wow, Kenya, that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And just thinking about all the people, like the way your life has changed and all the people that you're helping, like, oh, do we need people like you doing what you're doing out there? So I'm so glad and happy for you that you found you. And you're out there making a difference for yourself and others. Um, so, Boomy, what I was going to say, and thank you, Kenya, for sharing that because it's very inspiring. Um, so, Boomy, what I'm going to say is I think that, well, I don't think, I know for myself throughout my, my life, there's times that I definitely have to slow down take a look at myself, like really check in with myself. What, what is my belief system? What level of believing, like where am I within that belief system? And where do I need to make adjustments? And I, I try not to get hung up there because it can be easy to get hung up there. And I know that right now I have to move differently again. So in that process of taking a look, I can do it faster now than I used to be able to because I know now what I did not know before. Um, but I'm in that process as well of assessing, checking in with myself and really realizing it's funny that this is the topic because I journal every single day. And just this morning, I wrote in the journal that I have to focus more and I have to focus better and where I need to make the improvements in my actions with that focus and a deeper level of belief 
in myself. So that's where I'm at right now. That's exactly what I'm doing because I definitely know and want to move differently. But if I, if I don't know where I am mentally, emotionally, and within my belief system, it's going to be that much more difficult to move differently. So I'm so glad that this is the topic today because literally I was writing about this before the call. So I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you for sharing, Felicia. You are so right because we can determine to move differently, but all we can do as entrepreneurs or as people is what we are programmed to do. So self-reflection is good, right? It's good to self-reflect, see where you need to get better. But if we, if, if we don't really at the subconscious level write a new program that we're living from, then we're trying to work new by force and just using our will and that's not long lasting. We got to get up to a point where we're taking new actions because it's like a habit because we've created new habits. It's Kenya, um, if you're still there, yeah. can you speak to that for a moment? I mean, like, cause you're just like doing things. You're just like, it seems like things are just happening easily and effortlessly. For you, you. Yes. And, and you and know I, what? You, go ahead. No, you, you just mentioned something. You said something about doing something by force. Like, it's not hard and it's not by force when you are truly at that place and you have started to reprogram your subconscious like you talked about, like things start happening effortlessly, you know, people start calling, um, you know, that you had thought of before, but, you know, now they're calling you back or, you know, just doors start opening. You're like, wow, it, it just is it's miraculous how. And it's not hard. It's just, um, it's not forced at all. Um, but again, it, it, you've got to go deeper. And once you go deeper, then the outside world starts to reflect the inside world. So it wasn't that I was doing things on the outside of me, like making a hundred calls or sending out a million brochures, like I was working on me and it's like, it's funny because all these years, all my life, I heard about all of this stuff, but it didn't become meaningful to me. It seems like within the, until, you know, within the last few years, because I, I heard it, it sounded good, but it didn't mean anything until I really said, okay, well, what does it mean? And how can I implement it? And like, I didn't know what that looked like like change yourself first and then everything else around you changes. That is most certainly something that I live by nowadays, not only in my business life, but in my relationships, my financial world, like everything. I can't change my kids. I can't change my partner. I can't change the coworkers, you know, that I work with. I can't change the clients or my business partners. All I can do is change myself. And, and that's what I go to work hard on all the time hard fun but intentional it's not really hard I didn't mean to use that word but you know so I go to work on me and I know that without a shadow of a doubt that everything else around me is going to mimic me yes yes wow. good good stuff good stuff thank you for sharing Kenya <laughs> um I think we had um Robin I mean Robin <laughs> Rhonda Okay, so Kenya just actually <laughs> got me going in a different direction now. So mm -hmm. that just based on what you said just now, I believe that's probably gives you the passion and the drive to help the people that you're helping in the in your field that you've chosen because your passion comes across so um, fast now. So it's do you see or find yourself being more comfortable, I guess, in helping your residential um, patients or, or clients? Because now you know the key, which is working on yourself. Did you hear that, Kenya?
Uh oh, I think she must have been she must have been in a bad area because she um right she, she my, fell off. my um my response to what I'm doing differently um as far as your question today is the procrastination. Um I'm getting to start to stop procrastinating. It's like as soon as it, it comes about, do it. You know, mm -hmm. stop what I'm doing, do it. Or as someone asks me to do something for them and I'm saying or committing to do it, do it then. Because mm -hmm. I know my, my life is like crazy right now. So, so as soon as someone says, you know, can you do this or what have you, and I'm committing to them that I'm going to do it, I'm doing it right then. So um, that's where I'm starting. And even with my kids, you know, I have to do better at that. As soon as they come in to my space and they start talking, I'm like, okay, let me stop what I'm doing, mm -hmm. get off the phone or whatever, and listen to them. Because that's pretty much what they've been saying to me. And we have had this conversation on this call before, too, about kids. But And we don't have, in a sense, a redo, but we can go forward. So... Um, and start, like we said, to do different. So that's something that I am starting to work on. It's just, as they say, be here and be present, mm -hmm. literally, and not be everywhere else because you're not, that's not fair to others and it's not fair to yourself because you're giving everybody else and yourself a disservice when you're not giving that 100%. Like right now at eight o'clock, you know, I know that I want to be on this meetup. So I'm, gonna make sure I'm there in other words so that's my five cents yeah no that, that's good I love that stop procrastinating there are times in my life now where it could be something where somebody says oh well can you send me a picture of or can you send me uh the email about and I'm like okay wait a minute let me do it right now before we get off the phone because something could come in and it may not get done for another week so let me do it right now so learning to be like a right now action taker um when it's a good thing for us to do absolutely i'm i'm all on top of that thank you for um for sharing that Rhonda. and i saw coach crystal um <clears throat> unmuted um Being thank you that, for I this this topic today because it's really kind of like my mother would say in the teeth kind of like that wake up call and i wait for a confirmation so this is definitely a confirmation um, I want to speak on a little bit of Kenya, sorry if I didn't say her name right, and Rhonda, because um, I listened to Jim Rohn, and he says that um, if you work harder on yourself than you do on your job, mm -hmm. if you work hard on your job, you'll, all, you'll have a job, but if you work hard on yourself, you'll have wealth, so um, that's something that I really strongly believe in. And um, when it comes to actioning things quickly and procrastination, he also talks about don't be a perfectionist because a perfectionist is just another way of procrastinating. Until everything's perfect, then I'll do it. And I kind of, I'm kind of like that. Like I'll get all the background stuff. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a perfect executive assistant. My my profession or my skill set is being a senior executive assistant. So I'm so used to being the woman behind the executive, getting all the background stuff done so you look good. So I'm great at getting all that done. It's the it's the being the executive mindset, being in front of people um, and and doing the follow through. So from some trainings. I have some great ideas about things that I can, I can implement quickly and successfully because I'm an in-person person, but I've been having that perfectionist procrastination mindset where it's like, I have to have the recipe absolutely right because if everybody doesn't like it, it's not gonna be successful. And I think that's been kind of like my fallback, like, you know, my, my way of kind of sabotaging myself in my business a little bit, because there's a few things in that I have everything set up. I have a few tweaks I need to do. And then it's kind of, once I put it out there, there's no turning back. People are coming to my home for this event. People are going to be 
like going to assert to to have an expectation of me so i think i have all the background stuff done and and that procrastination so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it now thank you rhonda i'm gonna do it yeah. thank you for sharing coach crystal i'm like ooh, i i need someone like that <laughs> those executive assistants yeah. me too <laughs> right i wish that i wish that was me but um i i thought about what you said about don't be a perfectionist man that's a really a great word because so many of us y'all don't you want to like i've heard from so many people on my team oh i want to get the video just right and i did five takes and I, I i need to do this before i reach out to this person it's like no 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 before you be great you got to be good before you be good you got to be bad before you bad you just got to do something so we got to learn it's okay to just to start where we are and even if we fail, and I'm correct it because it's not, we always say it's not failure, it's feedback. So if you start without all the facts, without looking all pretty, just with where you are, with what you have, you like learn along the way. I mean, Kenya, I think about you, you like you didn't know anything about any of this. And you know, you're like, oh, girl, I got to learn how to do medical billing, right? <laughs> so Yo, I still don't know everything. I don't even know half the stuff I don't think. <laughs> But she's making it happen. Like it's because in her mind, it's like nobody's telling me that I can't. I'm telling myself that I can. And it's absolutely working out. And, and she's had so much, of course, frustrations, but you just keep going. Like she has business partners, right? And I love King of your mindset of this is my business. Yeah, I have partners, but look, I'm moving forward. I got goals. If I got to be the one that makes this thing the top, I'm taking personal ownership and I'm making this thing just happen and there have been frustrations because you felt like like kind of like you were doing most everything and they weren't but tell us a little thing a little bit about how you dealt with that so let me just say to the young lady who was just speaking once you I was totally where you were so I totally understand but once you so get a partner and just like Boomi said don't say that something has to be perfect like just do it and once you do start just doing stuff you know, uh, and you, once you get a few of them under your belt where you just, you know, did it regardless, you didn't procrastinate, like then it'll start to become like such a second nature. And then next thing you know, you're doing everything. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, I, um, I am an initiator. Like when I get an idea, like, or when I, or something needs to be done, I got to do it now. Like, I don't want to wait. I want to do it now. People are like, oh, we can do it next week. No, why? Like, why wait until next week? We need to, we need to be moving. So, and so yes, Boomi mentioned that I had other business partners and um, out of the three of us, I am, you know, the most engaged in the most, but that's because it's my business. I want to be successful. I don't know that their, you know, level of success, you know, looks like mine, but I know what I want for my life. And so in order to get there, I have to do certain things. And that's, you know, take an initiative and, and take an action quickly and promptly. And, you know, and, and today, not next week or not tomorrow, but today. Um, yeah, Boomi, I kind of got sidetracked. I don't even know if I answered your question. No. No, that, that's good. Let's hit on this personal initiative because when we're talking about well, what are some of the things we need to do differently is taking personal initiative and just ask yourself this, something that you need to do or are you the type, have you been the person that has been waiting for your upline, your manager or whoever to say, oh, you need to do this. In uh, Napoleon Hill's like 16 principles of success, whatever it's called, personal initiative is one of those things. So if you've just been like kind of like waiting for somebody to tell you, no, it, it, this is your business, is your future, is your goals, get it done. Take the personal initiative and do it. If it's things that you've seen other people who are successful do and you know you haven't done them and it would be advantageous for you to do them, like you don't have to be that person. You don't even have to feel like, oh, as you can do it as good as that person does it because they had a starting point too. People always look and they say, oh, Boomy, well, you seem so confident on videos or whatever. I remember in 2009 when my son, I didn't know about YouTube. He's like, you need a YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, well, can you set one up for me? Mm -hmm. Like, and I had never made a video. 
but I just started. I just talk. I don't. I still don't know about editing. My videos still don't look good. You know, people doing all these kinds of creative things with videos. I have not a clue. But and I'm not what I love about you. What I love about you, Boomy, and see, I'm that one who's like, my hair's got to be right. I got to have on lipstick, you know, and I'm trying to get out of that mindset. Girl, Boomy will come on here with bonnets and pajamas and everything. And that's how we have to be. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just like, look, let me just go ahead and, and do it. And it was funny because in 2009, when I first got on, I had this uh, started this little series called Basics in a Bathrobe. And at that time, nobody was on social media like really just showing up in their bathrobe and the bonnet on their head. And I was just trying to show, look, this is a home-based business. I'm home. I can make money in my pajamas. Well, now all people, people just are kind of doing things like that. But, uh, you know, I didn't keep that series going. But sometimes you're a trailblazer and you don't even know it. But yeah, we just got to, guys, get ourselves started. Do something differently. So you've been that perfectionist. Look, just like start going for it with what you have. Go ahead, Crystal. Can I ask for some feedback on something? Same topic, but I have downline that um, are like they they cut like when you present the opportunity and they're so hype and they're so um, excited and they want they have the desire, but now that they're in and they're, they realize that there's, and I don't, I don't hide nothing. I'm like, you know, we have a lot done for us, but this is a job. This is your business. You got to do the training. You got to show up for yourself. Like, you know, and they're like, I want to be just like you coach crystal. I want to get results like you. I want to be building my business. You're such an inspiration because my, and a testament don't rely on your upline because my upline is, <laughs> That's a whole other story for a whole other thing. So I wish I had 10 people like me, mm -hmm. but like I have many in my downline. Like I feel like they're a heavy load to pull. And it's like, how do you motivate them? I'm trying to motivate them by just being motivated myself. Watch me do as I do. Or, or, you know, if you see me being successful, then maybe you guys will have a drive, but is there something that you do that because I, I really feel like it's a heavy load. It's the heaviest part of my business. Delta it, I, family. I hope you are. Yes. I, I, was, I, I just I just got off mute just to just I yes, yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Now, how, again, tell me how many in your downline do you have that that make you feel that way? Um, I have officially 12 in my downline, and I'd say a good eight of them. Okay. They, they talk a good talk, mm -hmm. but, you know, well, where were you and, and the call on, on Monday? You know, every Monday, nine o'clock, we have a team call. Um, what are you doing? You're not doing your report. And like, I, I, I don't re mandate that they report to me, but I have a system. And mm -hmm. if you're not reporting to me, I can't support you in things where you might be going wrong or whatever. So they're not doing the actions, but, you know, they're a lot, oh, they'll cheer me on. But, mm -hmm. and then it's like, okay, what you're there. And my biggest pet peeve is I set up one-on-ones with them to really make my support to them personal for their situation and their goals and their time. And they won't even, sometimes they don't even show up and that like, okay. so I'm okay. just like now, now I won't. And it's like, okay, we're just doing it on messenger now because my time is valuable too. I could be doing my business activities. Right. So, okay. Well, let, let me say this. And, and, and I'm going to say this in the nicest, but straightforward, because I, I come from the old school of network marketing, right? You know, before we had internet, right? And all my mentors just bust me over the head, right? And, and that's, that's just what, what, what it is, right? Here's the, you said you got eight of them? That, that's like that? Yeah. Quick solution. Go get eight new ones. I like Simple it. As, it, it it's, it's no, it, that's it. We have to be okay with letting people move in their time, but never mm -hmm. allow them to slow your progress. Okay. Right? You, you, can't, you can't, we can try to inspire people. It's hard to have, the, the, if you motivate them, if you got to call them every day to pump them up, you're the only one going to be yeah. tired. Yeah. Okay? okay. And, then, and then think of it like this. Okay. If you're spending all that time with those eight, the reality is there's another eight that's looking and waiting for you. So simply 
be available, but be absent. Okay. Okay, leave them. All right. Then when they call and they need something, respond. But don't, again, what what what, what, what you gonna do with those eight? I'm gonna get me 16 new ones. There you go, just, just leave them. And 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 okay. and be and be, but you have to be okay because what here here's the thing that I see even when you speak, your your heart is a, is, is such a way that you want you want it more for them than they want it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know that's true because years and years ago, for me in this industry, I went through that process, and I know when I see that, yeah, you you go like, guys, if you just did this, if you and you just bleeding for them, mm -hmm. stop. Okay. Catch yourself up, get you to another eight, and rock with the ones that want to rock. That's the, the, the simplest. And you, you're going to feel better than the other eight. That doesn't mean they're going to quit. They're just in the pot simmering. It hasn't hit them yet. They mm -hmm. don't see it yet. So sometimes you have to build it bigger for them to see it. Okay. Okay. So All right. just go, yeah, go get yourself a new eight and you'll be fine. I'm on it. I'm okay. on it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Boomy, can I jump in real quick and respond to some of that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Wow, Delton, that was great. And it was great advice. And Coach Crystal, I can relate to what you're saying. But let me give you this perspective as, as well. Sometimes when we're dragging people along, we're really doing it for them and that never works so if you do back off I'm not saying there can't be one that all of a sudden has a aha moment and jumps on board and starts doing they had their epiphany in the time that was right for them but sometimes when you back off and you keep moving forward and you do go get that new 16, two, four, five, six, 16, however many it is, sometimes that gives a person a shakeup and that encourages them more to step up and do more because now you're not holding their hands so tight. Sometimes that can be what a person needs is for some, you know, instead of you trying to carry them, drag them because you're making it too easy for them or something that helps them to have that moment of, oh, I need to catch up. I have mm -hmm. to be at the same speed. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's, that's, that's my great. feedback. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And, and, and here's something my mother used to always say. I don't know if you all agree with this or not. And I think she got this from Art Williams. They would say, you can't make people good. You just got to find good people. And she was, she would always say to me, Boomy, you can let these people wear you out. You want it so much for them more than they want it for themselves. You're trying to make these people good. Girl, you just need to go out and find good people instead of trying to, you know, make somebody and, and cultivate them and nurture them and bring them up and whatever. She said, you just need to go find yourself some good people. So, you know, I, I still, I probably still try to do both. And, and I do know this back in the day, before I really got involved in the personal development work, I was still doing personal development. Sometimes I would say, sometimes people just need to read a book first before you recruit them because they just don't even have the right mindset. They'll come to a meet and get all excited. Oh yeah, I want to make money. And they just don't have it, the mental capacity as far as personal development wise to really do what needs to be done in, in business. So literally, I say some people first, before you give them a business, they need to, as King said, rewire their brain. They need to get a, a new mindset, go through my coaching course or something, and then they can take better actions. But you, like you can't, you, you can't make an apple an orange. You know, people can only give you, Dalton, you said it perfectly, what you say? People will only give you who they are. How did you say it that day? Oh, what I'm saying basically is this like again, uh, I guess we were talking about thing about how I, as I've personally evolved, I don't put expectations on people. And I understand that a person 
I'm, I'm never shocked with what a person does and I don't expect them to do anything other than what they do because they only can do and be who they are, period. That, that's all they can be. They can't, we can want them to be something else, but that's all they can be. And we have to be okay with that. So, so, so that, that's, that's basically I think what we were talking about that day was again, a person can only be who they are until they're willing to grow into something else. Yes. That's it. And if it's, it's their choice. We can't force them. We can, we can pull for them. We can root for them, but it has to be their decision. Yes, that's good. So and I'll tell you why I asked. I, I know I kind of changed the, the topic a little bit, but we're talking about building ourselves up and what we're going to do differently to get to the next level. But I just find it heavy, like you said, heavy, kept trying to pull those. I'm building myself up and, and excited and this and that. But then they come into the picture and it's like, oh. And I kind of also thought that who else is going to want to join my team if they see that the people I do have are not being successful? I'm, I'm the only one in my team. Why would they want to stick with me? You know, so, but I'm going to put that mindset a lot aside because I think that's, that's the enemy feeding me lies. And I'm, I know, I don't know what Kenya said, but the Lord has a purpose for me. So I'm going to walk into that now. And thank you both for, for that feedback. It really built me up. Awesome. And Donna sharing in the chat. She said, yes, you got to meet people where they are. If they're in the third grade and you're in the ninth grade, they have to go through the levels. And like Delton said, they have to be willing to go through the levels. Like Kenya can tell you, this is the way I used to be. And I made a decision to become another person, to step into a new identity, to do things differently and evolve myself. We're always seeking and growing and, you know, do the work. But a lot of people don't even realize how they have to become someone new and get new thinking. They come to a meeting, get all excited, and they've only made $50,000 a year on their job. And now they think they can make $150,000 in a business. No, you've got $50,000 a year, nine to five programming mindset. You can't just stick yourself like that into a business model and expect to make 150000 and It doesn't work like that. Um, anybody else want to share before we go? This uh, is Rhonda. Hey. I, just to, I just wanted to thank Crystal again because she said something that I actually do and or did at this point is I would always say I'm a perfectionist. And that makes sense because those two P's was, was what was holding me back because as a perfectionist, you're a procrastinator because <laughs> you're, you're waiting to everything lines up. And if we just think about life, that's not how it works. Because if everything is almost like when people with back with people as well, if everybody was the same, we wouldn't have no diversity. We wouldn't have, you know, and I, I used to tell people all the time, pick one person that you would think God would, would create just all of us the same. Like, come on, we got to be uh, diverse. And that's how we um, develop ecosystems and communities. Because in, in my job, I mean, I just had this last night. She was like, oh, my God, you're so good. I said, that's because pe I love people. People make the world go round. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stories that you hear all the time of people, especially in my business, I mean, in my um, career, it's amazing because it makes you either grow or, or stay stagnant. But the more, and more, like I told y'all the, the story yesterday about the $100,000 sale. I mean, if I had not realized, if I was in that person's pocket, I wouldn't have never been able to do that, you know, even book his $100,000 trip. So. It's, it's so funny and, and amazing how this has lined up, like I said, since I've joined your meetup in the morning. And that's why I make sure I'm there because I'm growing each and every day. And that is perfect, what she said, because that is one of the things that everybody would know me as. If I put something out there right now and say, what do you know, Rhonda? I'm telling you 100% of probably my friends would say, she's a perfectionist. She's a perfectionist. <laughs> She has to have every dot, you know, every dot jotted and every T crossed before she does anything. And 
I get it done, but I'll be right on that that edge. And I and I told them yesterday, I said, I gotta stop living on the edge, you all. I got to get better. And so this is perfect, right? I, I love what Rhonda said about that she's growing each and every day. That's what I, at the end of my meditation, that's what I was thinking about. Like every day, I just want to get a little bit better. Every day, I'm getting a little bit better. And then I say the affirmation every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. So I want to be better today than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I am today. That's awesome. <clears throat> Rhonda and I think Tillery did you want to share something Tillery Tillery unmute because I think you were next and then I see Dorcas is unmuted too okay all right can I uh oh okay sorry I hear you. go ahead is this better okay mm -hmm. no I was saying um <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, good morning, this is awesome. I just want to say, um, I just want to say that this is awesome. I think we should, I love the way also, if we think about our, our, our love tank, our think tank, our spirit tank, if it's filled with those things, you know, Lord says, you know, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, you know, just, you know, work on ourselves. I love that. Miss Kenya and everyone on the line, you know, how we have to look, work on ourselves and Dr. Boomy first, you know, because of our love tank and our attitude and our spirit tank is filled with those things that, you know, that are uh, where it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, uh, whatsoever things are just and pure and lovely, whatsoever things are good, a good report. You know, there be any virtue, there be praise. Think on those things. So fill it, uh, fill up our thinks and thoughts yeah. of those things that are, are, um, a blessing to us, blessing to God, God honoring, and which also blesses us. What are we honoring God? It blesses us, and then also, uh, we won't be so neediness, won't be so, uh, like in a desert land, thriving to get water from any and everywhere. You know, it's gonna, we we are filling ourselves up to those things that is to keep first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. So fill up those things of righteousness and goodness and, and you know, success and blessings first. So whatever people do, rejection or whatever, say yes or no, 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 yes. It doesn't, it won't, it won't phase us. We still on a good, uh, awesome and awesome trajectory because we're filled with those things that keep us going and keep us positive thinking those think on those things that are not may not be right there right now this moment as though they were so keep thinking on those positive things and those spiritual things that will fill us up and do the things that the lord has for us to do and will bless us but we can't worry about everybody little little re reaction on the outside of us <laughs> okay just wanted to share that good, no good good stuff good word okay. um, Hillary, thank you think of those things are, are of a good report um yes. And that's what we we need to do. A guy, I was on the phone with him yesterday. And he was like, well, tell me what is the worst things that could go wrong with this? I'm like, I'm not thinking about all the things that could go wrong. I'm focused on all the things that could go right. So we need to keep our mind on, on those good things. Thank you, Tillery. And Dorcas, I think you were at Unmuted. Oh, yeah. Hi, Boomy. Good to see you. Yes. Great morning, everyone. Um, I first want to say I really do thank um, Kenya for um, for giving us um, her story, and it is very, very, very inspiring. Um, and one thing that I am doing differently, because um, that's the was the the question of the day, I guess, is really loving um, myself, loving myself, and um, I was, I was on this tip, I love myself, I do this, I do that, but there was someone in my life for about 16 years. And this person, you know, outside relationships really have an impact on what you do. And uh, this personal relationship, you know, I thought it was good, but it, it really hasn't been good for me. It wasn't any type of physical abuse or anything like that. But when it came down to it, 
when it came to my goals and the things I said and my dreams, they would kind of pretty much put me down. And that had, I didn't know how that really affected me because I believe in manifestation. I manifested. Uh, I was living with my friend in a one bed, in me and my son in one bedroom, and I manifested. A, I'm in a three bedroom house. I moved in 2020. The place I work for, they, I didn't have a car. They actually, I, I drive a company car now, you know. So I am learning now just to really, really, really focus. And what I'm doing now is focusing on myself, on my goals, on my dreams. And when certain people are taken out of your life, let them go. Because a lot of times they are a hindrance to you and you do not know. And even though we are, we are here for ourselves, other people impact us a lot. And sometimes it is time to let go. And what they say, let go and let God. And I'm so happy now. I this this is done, and I am I'm looking forward, and I'm so um, happy about really working on me, like really, really working on me. And that's what I'm focusing on, and that's what what things have done have manifested before, and I'm ready to manifest even more through meditating, focusing. Um, and in doing the work, we have to do the work. And that took a lot for me to say, but it's time for me to let that debris go. And that is what I am focusing on to pivot myself into where I'm going. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you for that. sharing that, uh, Dorcas. That reminded me of a conversation that um, Felicia and I had lately and King and I had a long time ago. It's like, sometimes you got to like pray, Lord, if this person is not good for me, get them out of my life. And it's amazing the things that he would do to make someone go, right? And you got to know that he will answer that prayer. And sometimes everybody's energy is not just good for you. Sometimes we tolerate an energy that we know is not good for us. And we this we want to be helpful. We're concerned more about that person than we offer ourselves, you know? But no, it's, it's, this is our life experience, right? I mean, we're thinking about other people, but the first person that you have to look out for is yourself. And as you said, you love yourself. You realize you have to love yourself enough, enough to put yourself first and to allow that person to go. And do you know when we allow people out of our lives, that's really loving them because sometimes if they're holding on to us could be, maybe they can't fly and be all that they can be because they're so dependent on us. I mean, I don't know your situation, but I'm just saying it's just amazing when we when we stay in the right energy, protect our energy and let any energy that's bringing us down. We may be strong, but sometimes that negative energy can just like pull you down and stop you from soaring and being all you can be. Like let, let it go. I could do a whole thing on relationships too and how that changed in my life. Tell us something about it. <laughs> I did a post the other day. It just said, when I became the love of my life, mm -hmm. I found the love of my life. And um, it truly, just looking over, I'm whispering. I hope you can hear me because I'm in the office. Mm -hmm. Looking over my past relationships, you know, from as early as my 20s, you know, I was attracting the person who I was, you know, um, <sighs> You know, I had experienced periods of depression, you know, very low self-esteem, you know, because of my weight and just, you know, I had a job that I didn't like. I was a single mother, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And um, and so I really was getting that type of a person in my life. And I always felt like I had to hold on to them like you know, if, you know, like I just had to hold on to him with a, a tight grip, you know what I'm saying? And so now for me, I have the best person for me right now. And it's so funny because I have no fear in if he leaves, I have no fear in, I don't, I don't have to hold on to him, wonder you know, who he's talking to, what he's doing, not because of him, but because of who I am. And like, I know what I bring to the table. I know who I am. I know what I have to offer as a woman. If he wants to go somewhere else and get it, 
a boy, I will be so happy for you if you can get better than this, the laughter, the love, the everything, like go for it. Because guess what? I know that there's somebody else going to be out there for me too. Before I never believed that. I grew up hearing my mother say, you know, that all men are dogs, you know, and then you hear people talk about the shortage of good men. Well, guess what? Just like we are taught that there's an abundance of money, you know, there's an abundance of beauty in nature. There's an abundance of love. There's an abundance of men who want what I want. There's an abundance of men who want to love me. You know what I'm saying? So it, there's not just abundance with money. All these principles that we're learning, it is applicable in every single area of our life. And so I heard um, a say, I don't know the saying, but the analogy was, if you hold sand in your hand with an open hand, it stays. But as soon as you start to, you know, grip and try and tighten and hold the sand is when it starts to fall away. That's good stuff. I've never heard that, but that's awesome. What an awesome um, uh, word picture there. Thank you so much, Kenya. Look, everybody is like, wow, all of this is right on time. This is so good. I'm glad I've been here today. Can I get the recording? Yes, yes, yes. So it's 8.59. So we're going to end it here. Thank you, everybody who contributed today. I appreciate it. Um, you all for um, giving giving your word and sharing, asking your questions, giving your comments and feedback. This has been awesome. Um, most of you know my number, but if you want to get a recording of this, text me. <laughs> Coach Chris already texted me. Uh, 980-888-2000. 980-888-2000. If you want to get the recording and I'll send it out to you. Okay, awesome guys. Well, look, we, we are moving in a new direction, doing new things to get new results. Yes, yes, everybody give high five, hand claps. I see you, Crystal. We're gonna leave with some great energy today, today. So we'll be back here tomorrow. Coach Crystal got the topic already. She said tomorrow we're talking about uh, uh, stepping up in our social media game. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Thanks to Coach Crystal. And with that, you all have an awesome day. I love you. Remember, you are more powerful than you know. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kenya. See ya. Have a good day. Thank you, Bye -bye. everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yes.